Hello, my Facebook friends. Uh, today, I want to discuss um, and chat with you regarding to the Njanji wheelbarrow. <laughs> um, the Njanji wheelbarrow, every time I put a, a post to advertise my wheelbarrow, a lot of people complain about the price of the wheelbarrow. And I do understand when people complain about it because, yes, indeed, the price of the wheelbarrow is very high. Even if it was me, um, to buy the wheelbarrow from, uh, from somewhere else, I would have really found that wheelbarrow to be very expensive. But um, I think I would have still understand, I would, I would have understood why the wheelbarrow is very expensive. In fact, this wheelbarrow, uh, what is making it very expensive is the, the wheel. The wheel is very expensive because we're using a vehicle uh, wheel and um, uh, it's very, it costs a lot of money. These vehicle wheels are made in India, and uh, the people who are selling us, they buy them from Tanzania. So which means that the, wheel, the, the, the tire is made uh, in India, it has to be shipped to Tanzania, it pays duty there, and then somebody from Malawi has to order this, this tire from Tanzania, it has to be shipped, come to Malawi, pays duty, arrives uh, to the shop, and when I buy it, I, I'm the one who foots all those bills. I pay for the transportation for this tire from India to Tanzania. I pay for the, 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 the duty that was paid in there. I pay for the transportation of this tire to Malawi. I pay the duty in there. And also I'm paying the, the profit of the person who's selling this river, this, river, this tire to me. So you can see, by the time it comes to me, this river is very, very expensive. If I had any choice, I wouldn't have made a wheelbarrow using this tire. But my customers, they are the ones that demanded that I make this wheelbarrow uh, for them. So that is why you saw me making this wheelbarrow. I, I didn't even sit down myself to say, I want to make a wheelbarrow and I'm going to use a tuk-tuk tire. But it was the customer that actually suggested that I do that. So I made a, the, the wheelbarrow for the customer, but after calculating the materials, I told him how much the wheelbarrow is going to cost because the the tire alone is very expensive and this sheet now is becoming more and more expensive and then we have the, the, the pipe that we're using also and on the wheel we need to have a, um, a hub made and this hub is made by an uh, engineering company they also have to charge us so um, everything that is you see here on this wheelbarrow is not made in Malawi so the tires from India, we have this still coming from South Africa, and this still also coming from South Africa. And then we have the, the hub, which is also being made for us, and then we have to pay for the people who make the hub for us. So as you can see, by the time this wheelbarrow, these materials come to me, I have paid already. I'm paying over 20, uh, close to 120,000 um, kwacha for the materials to make this wheelbarrow. Now I'm selling this wheelbarrow at 140, so you can see how much profit I'm making on, out of the wheelbarrow. Not much profit. So many people, they're thinking that um, I am making a lot of money from the wheelbarrow and I'm robbing people by overcharging them. I challenge you, if you think that you, I am I'm selling this wheelbarrow too expensive, you can try to make this particular wheelbarrow with the same materials. Let's see if you're going to be able to sell it for less than 100,000, even 120,000. Let's see if you're going to be able to do it. It's impossible unless you're stealing the tires, somebody stealing the tires and selling it to you, or somebody stealing the metal somewhere else and, and selling it to you, which is not even something that can be consistent because how many times are they going to steal the material for you uh, if people are always ask you for the wheelbarrow? So yeah, um, because I'm buying the materials from the hardware, it costs me a lot of money. And on top of, the ta on top of that, when I'm buying from the hardware, I'm also having to pay tax there on the wheelbarrow. I have to pay tax on the wheelbarrow also when I'm, when I'm selling. So, what I'm trying to say now is, uh, but why is it that when people are finding this wheelbarrow to be very expensive, I'm still able to sell the wheelbarrow? Why is it that Ted is able to make a wheelbarrow that we think, we perceive it to be very expensive, but yet he's still able to find somebody to buy? The people who are buying this wheelbarrow in the first place are not buying the wheelbarrow. They are buying me. So what I'm trying to say is I am the brand. So most of the times when people buy products, they buy the brand. That is why you will see that most of the people, they will say, okay, I love to drink Coca-Cola or I like, I like Casbah Brown or whatsoever. 
they normally buying the brand, the brand. You find that most of the times, some of the products, they're similar, but only that they, they're packaged in a different way. And people buy a certain uh, kind of package just because um, of the brand. It's like, you know, people will buy Combeza yogurt, but if you test Combeza yogurt, you might find that it's tasting the same as another yogurt that is made from Tanzania. But people prefer the Combeza because they, they're actually um, following the brand. And that's, that's, what, that's how you do business, my fellow Malawians. When you want to do business, first of all, you need to be able to sell yourself. People have to buy you before they can buy your product. Now, what is it that the people follow when they want to buy a product for some, some, from somebody? The people want to buy a product from somebody because there are things that they're following from that person. First of all, the most important thing that they're following is trust. Can they trust the person? Is the person going to deliver on the promise that he's making? Um, if I buy this product from him, am I safe? Am I protected? Um, uh, is this person honest on when he's doing business? So these are the things that people buy from, first of all, they buy you. And the second thing that they, the people buy is actually, you are the brand, but the second thing will be the brand, which is your business. So your business is a brand also. So the people are saying, okay, Ted is selling a wheelbarrow and he, it's his company is called Gizmo. And Gizmo is promising that when I buy this wheelbarrow, it's going to last five years. Is he telling the truth? Or he's lying, he just wants me to buy and make the money uh, for, so, that, so that he can make the money. And also, uh, the people are going to buy, the brand is a promise. So each and every brand will always uh, give a promise to the customers. So my brand is saying, if you buy this wheelbarrow, you are going to last with it for five years. And whenever you have a problem with this wheelbarrow, I'll be there to fix the wheelbarrow for you free of charge. So yes, indeed, people are bringing their wheelbarrows to me and I'm fixing them free of charge. So I'm, I'm living on the promise that I'm giving the people. So a brand is a promise. But many people in Malawi, they're failing to understand that. Okay, now, so when, I'm, when, I, when, I, when I, I want to make a product that I want to sell on the market, how do I make sure that when I, as I make the product, it's going to be able to be sold? The first thing that I do is I look at who am I targeting? A, a good entrepreneur or a wise businessman or a wise um, brand, they will first of all look at what they call the market, market, uh, market segmentation. This product, the wheelbarrow, out there, what's the market for the wheelbarrows out there? Okay, there are so many types of people who are buying wheelbarrows out there. There's the people who are buying wheelbarrow to do their project at home. There's people who are buying wheelbarrows to do, uh, um, do some farming. There's people who are buying the wheelbarrows because they have a business, like uh, if they're doing mining. There's construction companies. So there are different people uh, who will buy a wheelbarrow for different purposes. So when I looked at the market, I always say to myself, how can I position myself on that market and look at a certain group of people that I am going to target. So that's how I do my business. I don't know how some of you do your business. I'm sure many people, when they make a wheelbarrow like this, they say they will say, my wheelbarrow, I'm making it for everybody. Anybody else can buy. Now, if you're making a wheelbarrow for anybody else, then it means that your wheelbarrow is not going to target a certain type of people. It will have a very difficult problem to position itself on the market. So it's not only the wheelbarrow, it's also the cement block machine. It's, it's, if you are a tailor, okay, who are you targeting? Who are going, going to be your customers? Now, if you know who, you, who is your customer, you will also be able to study what does this particular customer need? What are their needs? Because we as business people, we want to satisfy customers' needs. We're not satisfying customers' wants, but we satisfy customers' needs. Because a need is more precious and more in demand than a want. Somebody might want to have a, a car, but somebody needs a car. So you, you, for you, it's much easier for you to sell to somebody who needs a car than the one who wants a car. I, I, I hope that many, many most, most especially young Malawians, understand what I'm trying to say. Because when I post my post, most of the people that are being rude or saying rude things and saying, are you stealing from people? You are too expensive. Nobody's going to buy your wheelbarrow. They are very young people. And I know they're young, they're naive. They don't understand what business is like. They don't understand what life is. 
Now, this wheelbarrow, I am positioning this wheelbarrow for somebody who wants a quality wheelbarrow, somebody who wants a very strong wheelbarrow, somebody who wants to buy a wheelbarrow and forget about a wheelbarrow. Yeah? He's this guy, he's, he knows that because for me, time is very important. It's very important that when I buy a wheelbarrow, I must forget and do other things that are very important. He doesn't want to be buying wheelbarrow every day, every week, and every month buy another wheelbarrow. This is the type of person I'm looking for. This particular person is also looking, when, if he's looking for a wheelbarrow that he must buy and forget, he's actually looking for quality. So I have to make a wheelbarrow that's of good quality so that I can satisfy that particular customer. There is also another customer that would want a wheelbarrow. And this customer wants a cheap wheelbarrow. He wants to buy a wheelbarrow, go and do his projects, doesn't care how long the wheelbarrow is going to stay. When it's broken, they're going to go and buy another one because to them, they feel that because they're buying it for a less price, then they don't have to worry. But the person who looks, who demands quality, they want to buy something and forget. They want to buy something that can last many years. These people, normally, they are people who know what they want, they know what they need, and, they, and these are the type of people that I'm looking for. So you will see that I am positioning myself uh, to sell my products to people who are looking for quality. Because it's very difficult in Malawi for somebody to sell something that is cheap. Because already when we're talking about something that is cheap, it means that thing will not last. Now, the problem is there are so many cheap wheelbars out there. So you can also make a cheap wheelbar and sell to the people. But when somebody goes, when people go to buy a wheelbar at the hardware, they buy this cheap wheelbar and they take it home and the wheelbar will last a month, they don't care. All they do is uh, that wheelbarrow is broken, they go and buy another one. But if you make a wheelbarrow as a local Malawian and you sell it to the same people, when that wheelbarrow gets broken, they are going to come to you and they're going to demand their money back. They're going to say, you sold me a wheelbarrow and I've just used it for, a, for one month. How are you going to assist me? How are you going to help me? If you don't help them, they're going to go on social media and they're going to expose you. The, the same people that go and buy from the hardware in town, they're not going to expose the hardware. They will expose you as an individual. Then you, are, you, you have a very bad name. Your name is tarnished and you will never be able to do business. So that is why you see me that I, I, I would rather deal with a person who wants something that is quality, of quality. Somebody who is prepared to pay money to buy something that will last forever. I want you to buy this wheelbarrow and never come to me again to buy another wheelbarrow for five years. That's what I want to do. Why do I want that to happen? Because some people are thinking, why should I make a wheelbarrow that lasts five years? Because if I sell a wheelbarrow that lasts five years, that person is not going to come again to buy. I want you to buy this wheelbarrow and never come back again for, for five years to buy a wheelbarrow for me. Because why I'm doing this is because you are going to buy, instead of coming back to, for another wheelbarrow, you're going to work for me. So you are going to start selling the wheelbarrow for me. People will come to you and they'll ask you, where did you get this wheelbarrow? And you're going to say, I got it from Ted. And here's Ted's number. Now, every person who comes to you and sees the wheelbarrow, you will be selling the wheelbarrow for me. And that's what I'm, what I'm talking about. So, as Malawians, we should not be afraid to really um, try to make products that are very good, of good quality. Don't be afraid that you say, if I make a product of good quality, nobody's going to buy. This thing of saying nobody's going to buy because it's too expensive, this is actually crazy, people. You know, it's very, very mad because there are customers for each and every product. This wheelbarrow is selling. I am able to sell this wheelbarrow and people are buying it. And these are the people when they buy, they want to have a wheelbarrow that will last forever. That would last, I can even say forever, because we are making a very strong river. So I just wanted to share um, this, this knowledge to the young people to say, don't be afraid to produce good quality products because there are Malawians out there who are looking for good quality products. Say, for example, if there is, um, if, if there is about, there's about 15, million, uh, 15 to 18 million people in Malawi. Uh, out of the 15 million if there is five, five million that would want to buy a wheelbarrow, or maybe two million that would want to buy a wheelbarrow, and out of the two million, there is only five percent of them or two percent of them that are prepared that are prepared to buy a wheelbarrow like this. It's a big market for me. That's how I look at things. I don't look at things and say, okay, how, how many people are not going to buy my wheelbarrow because it's too expensive. When, the way I look at it, I look at it. The, the small amount of people that can afford this wheelbarrow is actually a good market for me.
because I'm just a little dot on a big, big market, just a little dot. So out of that big market, then they, if there are going to be 500 people who can afford this wheelbarrow, imagine how much money is that. So this is how you should start thinking. You should not always think of how can I fail or how can this, how is this going to fail? You must always think of how can I make, how can I get it right? All the time, think of how can I get it right? So yeah, this is what I wanted to share with you guys. Uh, I'm also going to share this video on YouTube. So if it's your first time to um, come to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Thank you.